continuing this. I'll oh, praise. Uh, continuing these lessons, uh, we thank Pastor Lambert, uh, who's done a very good job um, bringing the word, um, expounding on the word, uh, and receiving others' comments on the word as well. Uh, so once again, uh, I'm not going to take any time. So, time is going already. Uh, so we give thanks. Uh, Pastor Lambert, we're going to invite you in and uh, open us up in this topic. All praise be to the Most High. Thank you, um, for brother, um, brother Jeffrey. I want to greet everyone once again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, uh, greet all our pastors, Pastor Quarry, and all the other pastors that are online, and all saints and brethren. Um, me, my, sorry about that. My, um, my, uh, my camera was blocked. But anyhow, I want to give God thanks to be here. Um, tonight, we're, um, we're, we're on the last leg, and it's about prayer. You know, um, when I was preparing this, you know, and I, after I was going through everything here, I don't know that there's anything really new, brand new, that we're probably going to... Um, learn tonight um, maybe i think that um uh, things will probably be um what do you say you now um rekindled or are you know it will be really some good reminders um there's a couple of things though that i i would like to to look at um hopefully we can get out of uh, out of the um the study and prior and um you know, it, it it is really about Jesus's prayer life in in that era. It's be good to to look at and how that translate to us, um, and so on. And you know, uh, the uh, personal prayer and and corporate prayer. So, but we're gonna we're gonna get in there. Uh, we're gonna get into it. Um, so we've we've looked at um, so far. Uh, we've looked at. Um, uh, obedience to the word we've looked at love we look we've looked at faith and and prayer and it's power tools for success and uh, you know when you look at all of these four um areas that we looked at you know it's like none of them no one of them stand on their own um just so that we know it it, it all it all has to be um together uh you know, you know, practice together. It's all part of, of one. You know, it's it's all part of one. So even though we say it's power tools, you know, but it's kind of like maybe one tool with some different drivers. Um, you know, that's that's really you know how I see it. Like these things definitely will bring us success in our um, you know Christian calling, and and even in our personal life. You know, um, a lot of time we're not. Um, we're not succeeding in our personal life because um, you know our our it, it, the spiritual side has been neglected or not developed how it should. Um, so for for prayer, um, I think that um, prayer is I'm gonna say the most powerful weapon in the Christian Christian arsenal. You know, of all the tools that God has given us to to survive. Um, Prayer is is one of is probably the most powerful, um, and if if we understand what you know prayer is all about, it's it's the I think it's the most it's it's the most powerful one. Praise the Lord. Um, so I have a question here. Um, uh, I've got about four uh, five sections. One of them is what does prayer do? What is prayer about? Jesus and prayer, and you know what hinders can hinder a prayer. And uh, times when prayer needs to be intense. So the first one we're going to look at is um, what does prayer do? And um, right off the bat, I think everybody can agree that prayer, you know, it, it at the very least, it brings us into the presence of God. This is really what it does. Um, it's the only way we've got to communicate with the Lord. Uh, um, and so this is what prayer does. Prayer brings us in, in his presence, even though he's in glory and we're here. Once we call out to him, it's as if, you know, we're talking, 
you know, we're we're in the king's court. That that's what prayer does. Um, the one of the other thing that prayer does, it it facilitates personal worship, right? We see this in um, in Matthew six, um, verse five and six, and this this is Jesus teaching. We're gonna be we're gonna be um, looking at it. This is where Jesus is teaching about about prayer, right? And he talks about in Matthew six there. He talks about when we pray, you know. What we're supposed to do, you know, we, we're supposed to do it privately. He said, goes into go into our closet. Doesn't really mean that we should hide. It really means that we should, it's something that we need to do in private because it is between us and God. Um, so these are these are this is one of the things that it does, personal um worship. You know, if we want to fellowship personally with the Lord, we have to enter into prayer. Praise the Lord. Um uh, so, and then the next one is, it allows us to receive blessings or favors from God. You know, it's really interesting. If you want something from the Lord, the Bible says you got to ask for it. <laughs> you know, you can't just sit down and imagine, you know, said, you know, I wonder if the Lord will give me this. You know, I hope the Lord gives me this. The scripture actually tells us, and I'm going to have someone read for us. Matthew 21, verse um, 22, and we'll also look at um, 26 and verse 53. All right, Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Thank you, sir, yes. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe ye shall receive. Thank you, sir. And verse and Matthew and 2653. All right. 26 and 53. Operators. <clears throat> All right. Thinkest thou that I cannot, sorry. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? And he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Thank you. So I added that verse in just to show like um, maybe uh, uh, say an ex extreme example. So G this was Jesus when he was before Pilate. Right. And um, and Jesus is saying, like, if I want, I can ask my father for this and he'll do it. Praise the Lord. And um, it just, it, you know, that it, it complements the statement where he made earlier that, you know, um, what they asked for. And mind you, he was talking that in Matthew 21, it wasn't really just about prayer. It was really about faith, them having faith. Um, and as we go down, we'll realize that, you know, uh, prayer has to be mixed with faith, right? It has to. But um, the, at the same time, you've got to have the faith to ask. You have to, we have to pray for, you know, for what we need. And and in, in this case, Jesus is saying, like, if I felt I needed this, I would ask for it, right? And, and, and so on. And so I use that example to show that what we need from the Lord, whatever favor we need from the Lord, we need to ask him for it. Um, praise the Lord. And um, there's another uh, section that I want to look at, and it's it, it's another scripture, and it's Isaiah um, 40, verse 28 to 31. Uh, it shows, it shows it, this scripture um, talks about waiting on God. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Say chapter 40, verses 20, what was it? Say? Sorry, say the verse again. 28 to 31. 28 to 30. All right. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, 
and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Thank you, sir. And Matthew 26, verse 41. I know we were in Matthew before, but it sort of correlates. I'm going to tie these two together. All right. Well, Matthew 26, 41. Thank you. Yes. Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Thank you, sir. Um, so these are just two of the scriptures that actually shows how the Lord strengthened us. In, in the book of Isaiah 40, it didn't really specifically say pray. Uh, we, we, call up on, we call up the scripture all the time um, about, you know, praying and, and waiting on the Lord. But, but in, in Isaiah, it uses the word wait. And, um, you know, it sort of depicts like perseverance, you know, waiting on God. And, and normally when you're waiting, the Lord, you're really waiting in prayer. You know, you're talking to him, you're, you're, you're seeking him about the situation. You're not taking some action that you shouldn't, you know, are coming to a personal, um, you're not trying to plot your own course of action. You're, you're waiting on the Lord. And so you pray, you pray through the situation. Now in, in, in Matthew 26, Jesus uses uh, the statement saying that he says, pray or you will fall in temptation what it means is that when you're tempted if you're not praying you will fail that's what he's saying so at that time what he was doing was praying so that he would not fail that's what he was doing yeah you know in in matthew 26 he's in the garden of gethsemane and and he before he gets into the garden he's right after the lord's supper and he says my spirit is heavy i feel pressured I, I, there's a burden on me and um, I need to pray. So he, he goes into the garden there and he's praying and it's very intense what's going on here. Um, in the, if you read in the account in Luke, Luke kind of helps us understand it a little better. But, but, uh, but in Luke, it says that his, his, his sweat became drops of blood. That's how much pressure he was under. And, um, you know, his human flesh was kind of not really standing up to it. And so he's praying. And, and, and disciples, while, while that was going on, they kind of fell asleep. And, and we would think that they're pretty careless. They're pretty uh, juvenile or whatever. But, but the scripture said that it's actually not exactly like that. They were, they were falling asleep because of the sorrow that was upon them when they saw how Jesus was. And, and, and Jesus, in, in the midst of all this, said to them, watch and uh, you know, pray. Uh, you know, because oh, the, the the spirit is willing or like we have a desire to to do what is right, but our flesh is so weak that we really don't have the power sometimes to stand up in temptation. And so when we pray, we get strength. And, you know, um, this is something that is very fundamental. And every Christian needs to understand this, that we will never actually stand in our cases on our own. There's going to be temptations out there that um, will slay us. And so we have to pray to the point where we overcome every temptation. Um, and I say every, some people believe that you can't overcome them all, but, I, I, but the scripture says that if I pray, I can, right? Um, the other one would uh, think that prayer does, and, and my list, by the way, is not a... Uh, a total list, you know, it's not a um, exhausted list of what prayer does, but I'm just putting some examples here, some of the prominent ones. Prayer um, brings about healing. We see that in the book of James chapter five, verse six, and it brings about deliverance, you know, other type of deliverances. Uh, we see that in the book of Acts, verse um, 25, and that's um, Paul and Silas. Now, Here's another thing that prayer does. Prayer brings revelations. Um, if you, you know, we, we, we say this all the time, and I don't know that people are consistently doing this anymore. If they, need, if they need to know something, if they need to understand something, 
we, we can pray about it. And, and a lot of times, if it's in the will of the Lord, he will reveal it. So we see this in the book of Daniel chapter 9. He's concerned about what should happen to the nation of Israel. And so he started talking to the Lord about it. And his prayer is a prayer that we should study and understand. I don't know that we can actually look into it tonight, but he prayed, he made confessions, he supplicated. And, and as we see in the scripture there, the Lord sent an angel to tell him exactly what was going to happen. He will answer his question in totality. Sometimes we're praying, we're not even seeking God for something, but he wants us to know something. And, 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 and he reveals it to us. So where do we see this? We see this, uh, an example is in the book of Acts chapter 10. Carnelius was praying all the time. You know, he was kind of like on the outside, you know, you know, he's a Roman soldier, but he believes in God. He's not accepted in the temple because he's a stranger, uh, especially a Roman, a soldier at that. And, and then, so Carnelius is over here praying. Peter, was going on his preaching circuit, and he was at Joppa, I believe, and he's on the rooftop of uh, Simon the Tanner, and he's praying, right? The Bible says, well, I think he was, they were getting ready, some food, but he goes up to the rooftop, he starts praying. So uh, Cornelius is over here praying, Peter is over there praying, and guess what? God revealed himself, sent an angel to speak to Cornelius, and he gave Peter a dream. And both of them was about the same thing. And so the Lord is revealing himself at that time. And both of them were praying. And so sometimes when we, when we go to pray, um, the will of God is revealed. Even if we're not, so it, it might not be something that we were directly asking about. Most times the revelation comes this way. We're not, sometimes the Lord reveals to us things that we're not asking him about. But these things are important to him and most definitely necessary for us. So he, you know, in prayer and, and by the way, this is really, really important to understand. This is one of the reasons why, you know, um, regular prayer is um, necessary because in regular prayer, what will happen is the will of God. You know, sometimes, you know, we're focused on what we want or what we think we should be focusing on, but sometimes we're not really focusing on the right things or, or, you know, we maybe need to be directed a little bit better, right? And so in Cornelius's case, you know, God was bringing him into the Christianity or becoming into the fold. And in Peter's case, he had a stumbling block. He didn't realize that somebody like Cornelius could be a part of the, you know, the family of God. And, and so the Lord revealed that to him, right? So a prayer is a great avenue for revelation where the Lord will, will, will speak to us. Um, praise the Lord. And many times, you know, we're praying and, you know, the Lord will put something in our, you know, sometimes we speak directly to our mind, sometimes we hear it audibly. And, and so a lot of revelations comes through prayer. Praise the Lord. The Lord speaks to us all the time through that. Um, and this is my top seven that I put down. I, I imagine that there's more. Um, but I want to ask if I'm going to pause here for a bit and ask if there's any questions, any comments. Yeah, we have a hand up. Uh, Sister Jackie, go ahead and unmute. Ask mm, a question or make comment. Thank you, Brother Jeffrey. Just a quick question, Pastor Lambert. And you kind of commented on it in Isaiah 40 when it yes. says to wait on the Lord. Sometimes, or some people may interpret this as not taking action. So we pray and we wait for the thing to happen. So my question to you is, are there circumstances where we pray, yes, and we seek God for direction, we inquire of God, but we also have to take some action, an action that we, that is within our ability and leave the rest to God. So under what circumstances do we wait completely on God? And under what circumstances do we pray, but take some action? In other words. Okay, so um, I imagine the other pastors can, um, or others can, can um, you know, give some input on this because this is a, I think this is a great question. It's a, it's an important question. Um, and my, my comment would be like, you know, sometimes 
if there's some, most times when you, you really have to wait on the Lord is when you are uncertain, when there's, when there's perhaps nothing that you can do. Because some, there's some situations that, um, uh, and these are difficult situations, by the way. So I'm, I'm, and there's, a, there's two sides to this, actually. So, so in a, if you're in a difficult situation, um, you, 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 and you can't do anything about it, then you really have to wait on the Lord. Some people, um, because the situation might be uncomfortable, they tend to want to act, even though they don't see a clear path, but they want to do something because of the discomfort. And, um, and so they, they just want to get out of it, right? And so they, they'll do something and then it's mm, wrong, you know, kind of thing. But in a case like that, uh, don't do that. You know, sometimes you just have to wait and let the Lord work the situation out. Don't pick, don't choose to do something that you know is not really going to fix the situation or, or could make the situation work. But if you see that it's something that could help or you could, you, you know, you could do something, then, you know, I think it's okay to, to do it because you know at times when some things can, if you do something, it might not fix the problem, but, you know, it might alleviate some of the, the 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 condition this is this is my take now on the on the other hand you know that that scripture there about uh, uh about waiting it, it it's it's meant for it's also meant for us to be um diligent in 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 seeking the lord it's not just when we are in trouble it's it's um it's for example it if i practice to seek the lord Maybe when trouble comes, I'll have more confidence in dealing with it. Also, I, I'm, I'm not sure if anybody else has any more anything that they could add to that. Pastor, Pastor Lambert, I'd like to add to it, if I may. Sure. Um, because it, this might be a little bit more extreme, but I, I think of it. The last thing you just said made me think of David, and uh, I'm just going to paraphrase for time. But First Samuel chapter 30 talks about how you know David. The Amalek Amalekites came and, you know, took David's wives, captured their wives and armies and so on and so forth. And then David, the Bible says that David went to went to the priest and right. he prayed and he asked the Lord, shall I go and pursue? And the Lord said, go pursue. Right. So mm -hmm. there. So David had to go. I know it's extreme, but still David still went and he pursued and then, you know, he recovered everything. Right. right. So sometimes you, you pray and, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, you having to do something. Because you're praying about, Lord, what should I do, right? Mm -hmm. And you're still waiting for an answer, but yet still the Most High can still be leading you to go and do something as you're in prayer. You know, because we're supposed to always be in prayer, as the Bible says, you know, pray without ceasing. So um, in everything, we're, we're, we're always going to have to do something, even in prayer. There's always, a, I believe, an action that needs to be done. My, this is a little bit more extreme, but in some circumstances, I would say, yeah, you're going to have to do something as you're waiting. Because the Bible says... Sorry, I'm going to take too long. <laughs> the Bible says run with patience. We understand right. you, running, running takes a lot of force, right? But you're doing it patiently. You understand? So I, I look at it like that and I'll leave it at there. All praise to the most. You, you, know, you know, Brother Jeffrey, I don't think what you're saying that is extreme at all. Um, I just want to point out one little thing. He sought the Lord and the Lord said, do it. Right. Yeah. So, so we have to remember that. But but one of the things that I think that we can do is like if we truly don't know what to do, continue doing what is right. I think that's sometimes we don't um, we don't. Uh, I'm going to use Joseph, for example. He's in prison. He really want to get out of this situation. And um, he has opportunities to to get out in a corrupt way and a lot of that, you know, you know, I'm pretty sure he would have been doing really well if he had take up uh, Mrs. Potiphar's advice, you know, but he would have been, you know, in the wrong. So he, he just kept on doing, you know, that wasn't a really good way out. So he kept on doing this right. It got worse. And then he, he he's in the prison. And he keeps on doing what's right, right? And so, so sometimes um, while we're waiting and it's tough, you, some, some of the things that we can actually do is just continue doing what's right. You know, if we, if we don't see a clear way out, because sometimes we really don't. We, we really don't. Pastor Corey, go ahead and unmute if you'd like to make a question, ask a question or make a comment.
Thank you. Thank you. And greetings, Pastor Lambert and, and greetings platform. Um, in, in waiting, um, in adding to, to, to what has been said, is that waiting also um, means constantly seeking, you know, the Lord. Um, it's, it's, it's a togetherness with you and God. So in, in, in waiting, and, and we have to understand that God, God moved in his own time. Um, there are instant when he he answer you know uh, very quick. There are instant when he don't you know. There are instant when he show up you know on emergency case. There are instant when he don't. But in waiting, one of the things that we have to also bear in mind that it it has to be a constant you know seeking and relationship. And dwelling in his will, and 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 he will unfold, you know, your desire, you know, um, to you. So we 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 must not, you know, um, because we don't receive what we ask for, then we stop pray, we pray, and we throw up arms, and you know, we go in despair and and feel like God is not, you know, answering or God is not hearing. But that's what waiting means, that you remain constantly praying, having a good relationship with God, allow his will to be done in your life, and you remain obedience to him, and he will grant you the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Thank you, folks. So um, I think... I, I'll just continue if there's no more questions of, uh, on that part. Um, uh, so there's when it comes to prayer, um, sometimes, you know, like me going around the churches for a number of years, sometimes you, you wonder if people understand what prayer is really about, you know why are we doing it really like you know we know we get these results you know but what what should be the right attitude or the right um understanding of why we should pray you know what what is it about because um what i've seen is you know you have some folks they live their lives they'll come to church uh, maybe they only come they mostly attend on sabbaths so they miss prayer meetings and they, you know, they're, these things are not critical. They, they, if for them, it's optional, right? But if they ever get in trouble, they're at every prayer meeting and they're calling the pastor and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you, and, and, and there are even some folks who, um, if they have a problem, you get the sense that they don't feel that they can seek the Lord um, you know, on their own and get through it. They have to be calling, you know, everybody and saying, you know, pray with me. And mind you now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we shouldn't call on each other to pray with us. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong in that area. But I'm just saying sometimes um, you, 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 we need to understand maybe that there's some issue that come our way. We need, we ourselves need to pray. Uh, as a, as a child of God, you know we we also need to pray and 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 get through these things and 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 is prayer just about making requests? You know, is, is there is there something else that happens in prayer that is um, maybe even more important than making requests? And, and so the question is, what is prayer about? Um, and I, I'm picking for um, uh, 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 the scripture. The, we go to the book of Acts and verse 25. We, I'm going to ask um, someone to please read for us the book of Acts, um, verse 25. And I'm going to talk about this scenario just a little bit. Which chapter, brother? Sorry, Acts 16. Sorry, Acts 16. All right, all praises. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Thank, thank you very much, sir. So we know the situation, right? 
absolutely uh, Paul and Silas are passing through the city. They, I believe it's a situation where they um I think they cast out a demon out of uh, out of this uh, Paul did uh out of this girl who was um soothsaying and um there was a complaint about it and then they were they were imprisoned and flogged and, and, and put in chains, right? So 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 they're in trouble. They're they're locked in a prison. They are in trouble. And when, even though they're in trouble, it says that at midnight they prayed, right? But notice there, there, there was no words recorded. What was recorded is that they sang and they were praising God and all the other prisoners heard them. So I kind of picked this, um, the, the scripture here to illustrate something about prayer. And that is, prayer is not just about um, making requests. Uh, a, a big part of why you should enter into your closet is really the fellowship with God. And that's what these men were doing. They were not praying to say, God, please get me out of the chain. I, I, I want to be free. We're in trouble, Lord. Come to our rescue. They, they, were, they were worshiping. They were, they were praising the Lord. So um, I think... This, and there's other scriptures that kind of illustrate um, what I'm talking about. But I picked this one because if if the, most people, if they're in this situation, they would be um, they would be crying to the Lord, Lord, let me out of here. And it would be all about trying to get out of the situation, right? But but these men were 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 worshiping, and I don't think they were worshiping because they were imprisoned. I think they were worshiping because this is their custom. This is how they pray. So even in this situation, they were they were doing it. So um, uh, so when we look at a situation like this, we realize that um, when it comes to prayer, the, there's there's activities, um, especially when we talk about um, before we talk about personal worship. In prayer, the, I think the primary part of prayer is is our personal worship. You know, when I get up in the morning. I need to go and worship the Lord. I need to pray to him. And in my prayer, I am going to worship and I'm, you know, and, and so on and, 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 and things like that. So prayer is, is really about that um, personal connection with the Lord. And it's about worship. It's about praise as much as it is about making petition to the Lord. Um, That's did you want to? Uh, sorry, Pastor Lambert, to interrupt. No, there was no, a hand. I have there was a hand. Question, but I will wait till the hand. Yeah, go ahead. You okay? You want the hand to go first? Sure. All right, Pastor, you go ahead. Unmute. mute. Thank you. Um, I I stand to be you know challenged on this, mm -hmm. but um, nevertheless, I'm not going to withhold what I want to say. Um, miracle, miracle doesn't done in secret. Right. Um, prior is the will of God be done on earth. A lot of believers, a lot of Christian, if you listen how they pray and you listen how they talk, they believe that prior is that their bid in heaven must be done. But prior is the will of God be done on earth. Now, every miracle that God done on earth, if you watch the scripture, he done to bring about his glory, to convict those who are around unbelievers, you know, and to let others know who he is. And so I I, 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 I I want us, and I like, you know, the, 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 the trend that you are taking, Pastor Lambert, because until believer get this, they want a miracle. They're not speaking what is the situation. You know, they're not even want to tell you on, on, on the point in which you must pray. They're just telling you to pray. Now, if God going to create a miracle, it means that something more than just a miracle going to happen in that environment. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so we must understand that if, if you're going to ask God to pray for healing of this finger, there must be somebody who know that this finger is sick. It can't bend. If you look, the Bible said this woman was unable. She bent for 18 years. She couldn't straighten. And everybody know that she was bent for 18 years, but God gave her a miracle. So you, if, you, if you're going to hide this sickness and nobody knows about it, but you alone, and then you want God to give you a miracle, right? Then I'm, I'm telling you, you are up for a long wait. Because the miracle going to come for him to get the glory and for those around who are unbelieved or who were praying with you to see that the miracle took place. Amen. I hold the rest there. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I, I think um, in a section I have, Jesus on prayer. Uh, and in that, we're going to look at, we we're going to take some time and look at Matthew 6. But in there, right. you'll see... Sorry, you. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say you will see. Well, and I agree with the pastor Corey, where part of the model prayer is that it will be done <laughs> on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> and all of our prayers <laughs> should be that in mind. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry, brother Jeff. Go ahead. Oh no, I, I, there was a hand that was up again, and I know you had one more point to make. But the hand oh. came down, so you can carry on. Okay. So because of um, what I, I was saying earlier about um, prayer is really um, about that personal communication, personal uh, worship with the Lord, um, then you, you, it, it must be regularly scheduled. So, you know, and, and um, what I'm talking about here is that prayer should be a regular part of our day, not much less our life, a regular part of our day. Um, prayer is something that needs to be regularly scheduled. What I mean by that is, uh, I guess another way to say that is we should make time to pray. We, we, we've, as Christians, we, we actually need to make time to pray because it really is a part of our relationship with the Lord. That's how we communicate with him. That's how we interact with him. And so we really need to, to schedule, make attempt, schedule a regular time. Um, if you look at, I'm going to ask us to look at Daniel 6. I was, uh, maybe I don't need to read it, but we can read it on our own time. But in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, the, Daniel, um, it, it, the story is about him being tempted and, and, and so on and tested. But I don't want to focus on that part. I want to focus on the part that shows what his prayer life was like. He regularly, he prayed three times a day. So his prayer schedule was, was three times a day. Now, why is that important? Well, Daniel was somebody who really pleased God. He had a very good prayer life. So if we really want to say, you know, you know, what, how often should I pray? Or, you know, what's a, what's a good practice? Um, he had a, a very good, um, you know, he shows us a very good example. Now, I know people will say, like, you know, the Jews had a, the Jews, sorry, I should say, had a prayer system where they would, they would pray, um, at certain times of the day, certain hour, you know, like, for example, I believe one of them is a the ninth hour. I didn't, I didn't um, prepare that for here, but I do know that they, they have that system and he was praying up to that. Maybe it's possible that he was praying according to that system. Nevertheless, though, it, um, it, it, it was something that um, was, that worked. Are, are was sufficient are you know it it was effective um and and we will see also not only daniel we're going to be looking at jesus as well um how jesus praying and his his was even more um more involved right so 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 prayer is really about our personal connection with the Lord, um, or worship, praise, and in in a personal way, um, 
And um, it, it is something that needs to be regularly scheduled. And, I'm, and I know that we have corporate prior and stuff like that, but I'm not talking about that right now. I'm just talking about individually and, and personally. Uh, Pastor, there's a hand up. You can take that hand. Sure, go ahead. All right, Sister Velvet, you go ahead, unmute, make a comment or ask a question. And then after that, Ian, uh, Brother Sim, you can go right after, okay? Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise this. I'll um, praise this. What I'm saying, look at the, the Muslims. The Muslims, they pray to Allah. And they pray how much time a day. Whatever they're doing, they stop what they're doing and they go and kneel down and they pray. And I remember a, a, a pastor here was telling us, he worked to the prison. And he said, whatever happen, and soon as the Muslim them come, they have to make them go and get their prayer, go and pray. They can't hold them from that. They have to give them the, chance, the time to go and pray. So I'm saying we pray to the true almighty God, and we're still not praying or we're supposed to pray. Yeah. Right. Appreciate your comments, Sister Velvet. Uh, did you want to respond, Pastor? No, 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 I will, I will not yet. I'll just wait for the comments. All right, brother, brother Simmons, go ahead, brother. You can unmute. Good night. Blessing. Yeah, all praises. Yeah, I was just listening to the pastor before. He's talking about you have to, somebody want, want to release, but they, they, they don't want to tell you what their problem. But you have to understand that when the woman touched the Messiah garment, the Messiah didn't know his, her problem. But it's our faith. Yes, right. If somebody believes that you can pray for, for him and, 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 he, and he will be healed, that faith will heal him. He don't have to tell you his problem. He just, he just tell you, pray for me, and you pray for him. And he will heal because his faith is by faith. It's not that what I know. is is what the Father knows. So you, know, you just have to believe. If somebody believes that you pray, and he will heal he will heal. All praises. Uh, we appreciate your comments, Brother Simmons. Good to hear from you, brother. Uh, I'm assuming this is Sister Marshall, because I haven't heard you in a long time, Sister Marshall. So go ahead, unmute, and make your yeah. comments, Sister Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. All praises. Yeah. All praises. Go ahead, sis. Yes. I, ha I said I really have to say something, mm -hmm. because this thing is in the heart and I've been and saying it even to my husband sometime. And it's I I when I heard the the, the speaker just now said prayer prayer is a part of worship. I give God thanks and praise because I said I'm not a fool. Sometimes when I say things, sometimes people might say, oh, what and what? But I see it that way. I mentioned even to my husband when I heard certain prayer going on sometime, just, just since we last week, I said, even in our worshiping song, I love that little part that said in our worshiping song. Well, I mentioned it sometime when I hear prayer is going on and I, it says, Oh, worship. I thank you very much for um, pastor that is teaching because you know what? It made me feel that when I heard you say that prayer, prayer is really a part of worship. The words he said, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, <laughs> his mercy proclaim. Go on up obedience. I said to my husband that our obedience that God wants must be like gold, as they say, when worshiping Him. Incense of lowliness. He said, kneel and adore Him. The Lord is His name. And I said, that worship. And therefore, many times when I pray for um, Pastor, that is a teacher tonight and my prayer is answered right away. Sometimes answered, I heard the Lord speak to me. I said, is the, the way that I really go in my time of prayer time 
if a minute or two or three or ten is late because I know that the Lord is there waiting on this spot for me, ready to hear me come to worshiping in my prayer time. And when I go and kneel down, I have to say, Lord, I am sorry. Please forgive me for the few minutes that is late. But that doesn't stop me from coming. So when I go each time for the day, I go and I pray. Sometimes I wonder people is praying days after days, months after months, and not hearing from God and hearing nothing. And so many times when I pray, I heard the voice of God speak and say, and what he said to go and do it's done. And therefore, I am blessed to hear when you say tonight, thank God that you was able to say, my worshiping time at all time, or every time I get up in the morning, 12 o'clock in the day, but I do it one now because I don't go by the man time that gone ahead of time. I pray because I said one o'clock, 12 o'clock now is 11, so I pray one. I pray four. And in the yeah, and thanks be to God. I bless God for you, sir. And I pray that you will continue to hold fast to that which God has given you to do. Because your words, when you say whatever you say, right now tonight, I am blessed because I see that you are on the right point in everything that you're doing. God bless you. Thanks for hearing me. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Sister Marshall. Thank Can I go, Brother Jeffrey? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're good. Um, yes, sir. So um, I thank everybody for their comments. Um, and, you know, um, when I was listening to our sister there just talking, um, one of the things that came back to me when she was talking is the Garden of Eden. So in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, in the cool of the day, the voice of the Lord came down into the garden he was you know he comes to commune with, with with adam and eve right and then of course at this particular time something was wrong um and so you know you know we know that they, what happened there but the point is though it it was a regular occurrence and um that communion and so when we're praying you know our prayer life it, it really should be about that um that communion, our regular prayer. We're gonna talk about situations where, um, you know, things come up like trouble and so on, but it shouldn't be trouble that drives us to seek the Lord. It really shouldn't be, be, be trouble, it should be love. If we, if we, you know, we sing the song, if we know we only knew the blessings that salvation brings, we would never stay away. But, but salvation is all about embracing the Lord, right? So, you know, spending um, time in the, in the, in the, in, in the presence of the Lord. Now, I just want to emphasize this because if we could talk about prayer, all we want, but if we don't do it, uh, practice it and do it right, then, um, you know, all our talk is to no avail, you know, it, it, you know, because, uh, you know, we have to actually do it, not talk about it. Now, one thing I want to say to us um, before I actually move on is this. Uh, there's nothing that we're going to tell God that he doesn't know. <laughs> this, so it's not really about just talking to him and, and telling him, you know, God, don't you see I'm in trouble? He actually knew from yesterday, you know, he knew before you knew. Right. So so there's nothing. Um, and I, I like what Pastor Quarry said before about his will. Right. So and a lot of times, you know, it's not we're going to tell God. God wants to tell us, you know, he, he really wants to tell us, you know, it's, it's really us who don't know, you know, um, a lot of the times. Right. So and that's why when we're going through stuff before the Lord, you know, we talk about waiting on him. We, we need to be patient you know, and, 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 and so on. But we, prayer, regular prayer, has to be a part of our life as Christians. Otherwise, we definitely failure will happen. Failure will happen, and a lot of failures that are going on right now is because of this lack of frequency in prayer. And, you know, the, our sister talked about the, um, the consistency of the Muslim. We have more reason to be even more persistent consistent and persistent than 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 they are um we want to 
I don't see any hands. So we will move on to the, the next point that I have here, because uh, we, we, there's two things that I really need to talk about, that we really need to talk about. Um, and one of them here is uh, actually this one here. There's a few things that I have here, but uh, we're, we're, we only have an hour. So I want to try to go through this one quickly. Um, and this one is about Jesus's prior life and what he says about prior. Um, if we if we go to Matthew chapter six, verse five to fifteen, there he's answering a question. The question is, how do we pray, right? And so he goes through the prior there. And I'm gonna ask Brother Jeffrey, whoever is reading, to just read it for us quickly, just to refresh our memory. There's a couple of things that we need to um, pull out of this when it comes to prayer. All right, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 15. But if ye forgive not men their oh, trespasses... I'm sorry. Please excuse me, Brother Jeffrey. I might have said it incorrectly. Chapter 6, 5 to 15, 10 verses. Oh, 5 to 15. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, and uh, Matthew 6, verse 5. So, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in, in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Thank you very much, um, Brother Jeff. Uh, so, so there's a couple of things that Jesus emphasized here, and he talks about. Um, first of all, before he he. Um, he, he addressed some attitudes, right? It, prior shouldn't be something that is, we're showing off with, in, in my own words. It's not something where we're looking for praise from men. It's something where we're, we're, we're devoting to God. So let it be in secret. You know, it's, it's more effective if it's in secret because it's only about us and God. And it's not saying that you should hide and pray, as I said before. He's just saying that it needs to be private like it's something between us and the lord the individual and god um in and this is all about not corporate prayer now but personal prayer um so that there's one thing then he talks about vain repetitions and i've heard in the church people because somebody prays for long and they might even repeat themselves a little people would say oh they're repeating themselves so it's vain Remember, he never said repetitions. He said vain repetitions. That's what he said. He said vain repetitions. So, you know, sometimes there are people have, they'll write and say, pray this prayer, repeat this 10 times, and, you, and something's going to happen. That's a vain repetition right there. But if you're praying to the Lord, so take, for example, Jesus in, in, in Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed the same things several times. 
the same things he was asking God the Father said, you know, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. He prayed it several times. So because that was the issue at the time, right? And 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 he's in prayer and he's still under the pressure. So it's not really if you repeat yourself a little bit, you'll say, Lord, have mercy 10 times because you're really under this duress. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's it's about the vain repetition is about um it's like a formula that is empty i see a, i see the question yeah, I see it. Was, was was asked there so, yeah, so what is vain, exactly want, okay yeah so i want to make it very clear vain repetition is an empty repetition when you're you're just reciting something i've been are you been taught to say this and you keep saying it over and over or or something that is incorrect you know, now he says, and, and, and for them to understand what he meant, he says, as the heathen do. So heathen religions were around them and they were doing this, right? So it doesn't mean that you can't pray for long or or you can't even, you know, repeat what you had said before, uh, uh, something like that. It doesn't really mean that. So um, I want us to, um, I mean, I've heard it said in the church of time, you know, about like if a person repeat themselves, it's like it's vain repetition or, you know, and, and so on. So I just want to put that out there. So vain repetition is something that is meaningless, doesn't really apply, something that is even incorrect. You know, those kind of things, because the reason why it's vain is because it's empty, because that's what that word means. It doesn't make any sense or it it doesn't really do anything. You know, that's that's what a vain repetition is. But you talking to God, even if you repeat yourself, that's not vain repetition because you're in that situation and that situation is possibly very real for you. Right. So it's not it's not really a vain repetition. It's not an empty repetition. You know, it's, it's, it's like you're saying help 10 times over the same situation because that situation is still there. It's not gone away, right? Now, um, so there's a few points there. One of them is the point about that will be done. And one other thing I should point about about the prayer, by the way, if you look at that prayer, there's nothing in future tense in that prayer or any past tense. So that prayer is about the day, the moment. And 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 if you if you if you if you really look at that prayer, for example, daily bread, pray for what I need today. My sins, you know, it's really is about today, right? And and so that means you you have to pray every day, right? You can't just pray today for tomorrow, right? And so and there's there's a few things in there, and then one of the things that he emphasized is he emphasized about forgiveness, and we're gonna come to that later. But I just want to point that out in the teaching. He says that if we do not forgive men and you are somebody do you something and they, you go to pray about it and um, you, you go to pray, sorry, and um, you haven't forgiven someone who's done you wrong. When you uh, when you go to the Lord now to say, please forgive me for, for something that I've done wrong in your side, Lord, you know, you, you're going to have a problem. Right. So 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 that that is really that's that speaks to how we you know, we when we go in front of the Lord, um, what should what should happen? Um, there's another section now where I wanted to look at also really look at Jesus's prayer. But I see some hands up, so I don't want the hands to accumulate. So I'll take okay. the hand um, just in case that I don't want the point to move on and the hand don't get to. Oh, sorry. I should say I take the hand out the strip to Brother Jeff. Okay, Pastor Corey, go ahead and unmute. All right. Um, two things. Um, first, let me say um, I think Brother Ian don't understand uh, clearly what I was saying. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the individual who have the need and 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 want us. To, to pray, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus knows, as you said, Pastor, you, I'm glad that you bring that cross. Jesus know everything, but he He want when he create a miracle that and believers and all around will understand that this was a situation no one else could have make it possible but Jesus or but Father God. Um, I, I want you, Pastor, to, to throw some more weight on this vein Um repetition um, based on verse seven. When you pray, use not vain repetition right. as the heathen 
do. Because based on my teaching um, over the years, is that one can use vain word in repeating, you know, one word over and over in their prayer. Like they would say, um, Jesus have mercy. And they would say, Jesus have mercy over and over. Every, every, every next word is Jesus of mercy. Or every next word is Father God. Or is every next word is Mighty God. Every next word. Um, my, my, my teaching over the years is that, that it would be vain. Because you approach Jesus, um, Father God, you approach him through Jesus. Now you just need to make your request known unto him. You don't have to be calling his name over and over again. Um, I was taught um, that if you do that, you know, that can classify as well as vain. What is your take on that, sir? So, so sir, um, actually, <laughs> so I was, I was taught that too, but I, I, I don't, I, I, um, I look at that verse and the, the verse says, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do. So what really, that's really what cl clarify the, 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 the idea of vain repetition, like the heathen would not do say Father God several times. The heathen would would and so and for example, right? Um, you have religions where, for example, they'll get a bead, and they will they will <laughs> as a form of meditation they will they will repeat the same thing over and over again. And, and we have to understand that he says, as the heathen do. So but the, the heathen, one point, Pastor, the heathen, the heathen don't pray to God. Yeah. Uh, they pray, they pray to whoever they are praying to. Pagan. That's true. Pagan. Uh, that's true. Which pagan, but, right? Hold on, they're pagan. So because they're pagan, God, uh, uh, bear with me. Because mm -hmm. they're pagan, God is 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 a man-made God. Mm -hmm. Right. So they have to call him as if he's sleeping. They have to repeat what they are repeating as if they want to, to let him to get him attention. So now he's saying this is how they, they come to their God because their God can hear, don't understand, can be touched with their feelings mm -hmm. like our God. So because we have a God who, before we call, he hear, and while we were yet speaking, he answer. So I understand that this verse is saying, we don't have to be calling him like he's sleeping. We don't have to call him like he don't hear us. From the moment we open our mouth, he hear. So don't, it's as if your son come in and he say, daddy, and you say, yes. I mean, daddy, 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 daddy. You, you're going to think there's something wrong with him because he would have known that you hear him and you answer, but he keeps saying, daddy, you got to probably bring him to the doctor, something wrong with him. So I believe that's how the heathen would have been calling their God as if, you know, they want their God to come now, but their God can't come. But once you call on our father, he hear and he come to our rescue. So you don't have to be calling him like you're waking him up out of his sleep. That's my day. Let me hear you, sir. Okay, sir. So thank you. Um, now I have a bit of a different take on it, and um, I'll, I'll explain. Uh, when you look in the scripture, even Jesus himself, when in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying, and that's one instant where we see there, and he actually repeated himself several times. Um, and so when you look at that, you realize that how our church was um, explaining a part of the vain repetition is not exactly so. Because, for example, right, if you are under duress, you yourself are under duress, it's natural for you to, to, to your emotions to take you in a state where you would say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, because of the the pressure or whatever that's on you. So, so nothing's wrong with that. Now, one thing, and so what, what we need to understand though about this, so it, it's not about the heathen praying to his God. It's about how the heathen pray. So the, how they practice their prayer practices. So now they, they, that's why, so, so, so the question that they were asking Jesus, uh, they asked Jesus, you know, he said, teach us how to pray. And he says, don't pray like how they pray. 
And, and that's why I say using the vain repetition. So what I'm trying to say now is that a lot of heathen friars, a people of other faith, they repeat things all the time. Now you have Christian churches that teach people to say things, for example, like Hail Marys. And they will say several of these Hail Marys. That's vain. You know, you, you know, that kind of a thing, because it's a it's a it's like a formula that they think is going to get them somewhere. So so what the thing about it is, it's 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 actually empty. Now, here's the thing, though, is like when we go before the Lord, sometimes we go there in an emotional way. We can go there maybe in a calm way, depends on what's going on with us. And and and, you know, when we're calling out to the Lord. We're casting our burden on him, right? So he understands. He he actually understands. Now, remember now, it's not really only about our words. It's it's mostly about what's going on in our heart, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's really, and, and I think you'll agree with me on that, Pastor Quarry. It's really mostly about what's going on in our heart, right? So... So the, the, the idea about the vein, because what happens is, you know, like, I don't think the Lord is going to really correct our speech. You know, he's not going to say your grammar is incorrect or <laughs> you, you are or something like this, right? He he knows, he he knows, even with us, like we're, we're talking in Patois or, or something like this. Um, he, he knows, like he's a master of languages, right? If you just got to go back to Genesis 11, right? <laughs> so so what, what I'm trying to say now is, I think the, the idea of the vain repetition there, I think that they kind of was, because I haven't taught that too. I, I think that they kind of kind of make a mistake on that one because sometimes you're in an earnest situation and um, you just call out to the Lord because it's, it's all fine and good when there's no pressure on us. We can really compose ourselves and talk to the Lord. But sometimes there's some pressure on us, right? And um, we, 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 we just have to, it, sometimes it's our emotion that's propelling us. And I think the Lord understands that as well. Now, um, sometimes too, like, um, like for example, me, I'll be praying. And um, when I go down to pray the first time, I, this is what happens. I don't, I, I don't know about other people, but when I go down to pray the first time, sometimes it's like I don't break the ice. And, and um, when I'm there on my knees and I'm waiting under the Lord, sometimes I end up praying what I prayed before, you know, because I, I start to reach out in my, in, in my, in, 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 in my spirit and, I'm, and, I, and I talk to the Lord, but, but I feel that the Lord understands, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel, I feel he understands, but I don't think he's, but I think they, when, when we look at verse seven and Matthew six here, we need to understand the concept Vain repetition is in the context of how the heathen prays. Yeah. You know, it's how the heathen prays, right? It's not just, oh, I gotta remember I said that already. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's not, it's not just like that. Um, yes. Uh, Pastor, did, did you want to? There's another hand. Do you want to take that hand, or you want to continue? I'll, I'll take that one. Just that one more, and because I really want to go into Jesus's prayer life. All right. No, yes, no, you go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh -huh. I, I want walk. to agree with the, that the, the teacher here absolutely is absolutely correct from my perspective because the Bible is filled with vain repetition. If you look at the Proverbs and the Psalms, it is filled with vain repetition. And look at Psalms 136 in particular that repeat. Every little statement, for his mercy endure it forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endure it today. Let us die, for his mercy, full with repetition, over and over again. So it is, the problem is with vain repetition, it's not with repetition. And so the, the minister is, is correct in the, in the context in which he's answering this question. I can look at and even Proverbs. It is filled with it, and we call it parallelism, or parallelism, or whatever we want to call it in right. in, our, in, our, in theology, where they, they they repeat words, and sometimes they would you know, change it and say children, and they and they, they say son, but it's the same wording with just maybe son or daughter changing. 
So the, the, the scripture is filled with that. And so if the scripture has repetition, we cannot refer to them as vain. Vain is different as the, as the teacher tonight have explained. So I agree with him totally. I appreciate it. Yeah, and just to add that it's not that the scripture is not vain, but it is repetitive. Absolutely. Thank, um, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Um, Actually, you know, Pastor, that word vain repetition, it's only mentioned one time in the Bible. I just looked that up. Right. It's right. Botella, but um, I can't pronounce it's Greek, Botello Geo. I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. saying it right. It's only mentioned one time in the Bible, that word vain repetition. That's how I bring that out. <laughs> right. Thank you very much, sir. And um, right. you know, I know we kind of beat we kind of beat it to death here, so I don't wanna I don't wanna um yeah. go into uh, to it um um too much. But I, I hope that kind of shed some some light on it, and um, you know we we will 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 um you know can can move on a little. Okay. Um, uh, sister, sister Lisa, you just hold your hand. We're, we're going to let Pastor Lambert finish, and then we'll get back to you. Okay, Sister Lisa. All right, you go ahead, Pastor. Thank you. So I want us to. I I won't. I have I have here instances where Jesus went to pray. So. I'm really excited about this um, because uh, this is something that I don't think is looked at a lot in the church, right? About when Jesus go to pray, how he prays. Like if we were around Jesus, a lot of us would probably say, I don't know if it's a lot of us, I probably shouldn't say that, but I know there's a few people that would say that he's a little bit on the fanatical side when it comes to prayer because of, his intensity and and you know how long he's at it and and things like this but but um we're gonna look at luke 6 if i can get some really quick uh reading because we, we won't we won't i won't be discussing them but i just want to highlight them for emphasis luke 6 um real quick sorry luke 6 verse 12 and if we could have a couple of readers, that would be very helpful because the other one is Matthew 14, 23 to 27. It's following that one. What's the other one? So Luke 6, 12, Matthew 14, 23 to 27. Luke 6, 12 reads, and it came to okay. pass in those days that he went out into a mountain and prayed and continued all night in praying to God. Thank you very much, sir. Matthew 14, 23 to 27. Okay. So it says, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea and tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And Mark 1.35 and Luke 5.16. Mark 1.35, Luke 5.16. Mark 1.35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Luke 5.16. I got it. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Thank you, sir. So the next scripture is going to be um, Luke 9, but holy, we're not going to read it yet, just yet. We're going to go to Luke 9, but but I just want to talk about these um, a little. Um, if you go and you check out these scriptures and read the context around them, the story behind, you know, next to it, and uh, what you'll find is that Jesus, Jesus is either praying a lot before ministry or after, or right after ministry. And he prayed for a very long time and he was at it for a while. So, for example, in the scripture, one scripture tells us in Luke 6, tells us he prayed all night. The next, and he, and he, this is, he was doing this on a regular basis. This is the, this is the impression that you get throughout the scripture. In, in, in one scripture, I think that's Matthew 14, 23 to 27, he, pray, he was ministering, he went, he prayed the whole night, and um, while these guys were going across on a boat, 
you know, to meet him. He, you know, he walked on the water and and so on. And um, what happened though is that he went in the night or late, and but when he got there on the boat, it was the fourth watch. So I didn't really check to see what or that corresponded to, but I do know I believe the watches are in every three hours or something like this, and are it is it's more than one hour apart. So at the very minimum, you know, watch one, it happens before watch two, uh, the first watch happens before the second watch, and, the, and, the, and it happens before the third watch, and so fourth watch. So it's just four watches. So four period of time, he was there at it, we know for sure. And so, for example, if the watches were three hours in length, then, you know, he was there for 12 hours. If it was two hours in length, he was there for at least eight hours, and we know it's more than one, right? So the 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 idea here is to is to kind of show the length and the intensity of how the Lord would pray. Um, you know, he was at it, and then to show the power that he came with after he prayed. Now. You know, a lot of us will say, well, that's Jesus because, you know, he just, remember, he's the son of God. But remember what the scripture says about Jesus. Jesus says, the, the scripture says that he humbled himself as a man. So a lot of the things that he did, he did it the way a man would or could or should. You know, so he, so for example, he would say to the, his disciples that greater works than these will you do. Like you're going to do greater works than I do. So the same thing that I'm doing, you can, you, you know, you, you should be able to do it as well. And so even in his ministry, prior was huge in propelling his ministry. Um, and so what we're going to look at now in Luke 9 is some of the things that happen in his prayer meetings, some of the things that happen, Luke 9, I believe, is the only scripture that gives you um, an insight into events that happen in his prayer meeting. Most of the time, he was going alone. Um, actually, not, not only Luke 9. When he, when he, um, when he, when he uh, went into the wilderness to fast that 40 days, we did get an insight also into some of the things that happened in his, in, his, in you know, when he goes to pray. But, 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 but Luke 9 is, is, is very, um, is very uh, sort of unique. It gives a unique uh, 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 perspective into what happened. So, uh, Luke 9, we want to read verse 18, then we'll jump up to 28 to 36. Verse 18 is not really a part of 28 to 26, but it sort of emphasizes how um, he prayed. So somebody, um, another reader, our, you know, our reader, please read Luke 9, um, 18 first, then 28 to 36. We're really going to be focusing on 28 to 36. All right, verse 18 says, and it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him and he asked them saying, whom say the people that I am? Verse 28. And it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the, fa the, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistered, glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his de de sorry decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Uh, which verse do you wanted me to finish at? Uh, verse... Um... Sorry, 28 to 36. 36, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, that's fine. I forgot. Uh, verse 32 says, But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, 
there came a cloud and it overshadowed them and they and they and they feared as they entered into the cloud and there came a voice out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him and when the voice was passed jesus was found alone and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen thank you very much brother jeffrey so just to kind of open it up a little bit what we see here is that this time he took the disciples who recorded what happened. And what we see here now is some point during the prior, they fell asleep, right? And he continued and he, you know, he, he continued his prior. We don't know what he said or what he did and, and, and so on. But it, it's, it's a prior meeting that he's having. And they fell asleep and he continued. And, and he reached the point that, you know, his purpose, you know, he, he reached all oh, what he, you know, wanted to pray about and all that needed to happen, happened. And, you know, he experienced it all. The disciples, they experienced um, some of it. But there's a couple of things that we need to look at here. Um, he was up there for a long time for them to, you know, have fallen asleep and, and wake up again and cut a part of it and and so on. And the, 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 the other thing is, though, he prayed to the point where, he was changed. He, he was transformed um, and, and so on. Um, so what I'm trying to say now, though, is not that we're going to be transformed in the same way. But when you look at it, if you go to a prayer meeting and you start reaching out to the Lord and he starts to respond to you, things will happen to you in prayer meeting. These are the things I believe that empowered Jesus. He was he was he was anointed. He was, he was, uh, he got revelations. He, um, he got a lot of comfort, a lot of direction. You know, sometimes when we are in the church and we're going through stuff, some of the things are not quite apparent to us if we look with our own eyes, right? But if you were, if we're talking to the Lord and we're seeking the Lord regularly, when the hard stuff comes along, it will not phase us. They told him what was going to happen to him. So, what happened is when he had to face it, he was not dismayed. He, you know, I mean, we know that he prayed because the burden was heavy, but he actually knew what was going to happen. And he would tell his disciples what was going to happen. That was one of the time Peter took him, shook him and said, Lord, you know, please don't say that, you know, um, and, and, and so on and so forth. But, but he knew because he, he, you know, he's, you know, the, the, through the prior a lot of things were revealed to him. A lot of, you know, a lot of things. So, so him ministering there, even as in the form of a man, um, he had to pray um, so that he's able to minister and so that he's able to function as well, right? So I personally believe that he, you know, how he ministered, all those miracles that he were and so on, it's, it's a lot of it is through his prayer. Um, you'll see that he, he went to pray once came down from the from um from praying and the disciples were struggling to cast out this demon and and he just rebuked the demon right away and and um you know it, it left because i believe that a lot of this had to you know it comes from his anointing um uh, you know or whatever the lord will give him through the through the prayer how he prayed and and i think that's really important for us to understand any comments? And I know there was a hand up, but I really wanted to sort of get through get through this. Uh, yeah, um, I think it was Sister Lissa. So um, if you wanted to come back, Sister Lissa, you can. But for now, we'll take Pastor Corey. You go ahead and mute. Thanks. Um, I don't want anybody to quote me, um, Pastor Lovebird, but I I'm going to tell you. Um, and I'm not going to call the name, but I was, I was attending a, a, a Bible institution in Jamaica, right? Not, not our church. And um, this is how they teach this passage. The verse, verse 32, um, that this portray how the child of God would go to sleep. They said that this portrayed that they will go to sleep in Jesus and awake in glory. While some persons think that 
boy, they couldn't pray with Jesus for the period of time. So um, what is your take on that? <laughs> Pastor, you know what? Let us take Sister Lisa first. <laughs> I pass. I pass. Um, oh, this is the least I pass. Looking for clarity, yeah. What's okay, that? okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't know if it's teasing me or pass a choir. You know the answer, <laughs> but, but uh, okay. Um, Alpha and Joga side, that's really interesting, but it, 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 it's, it's. It's kind of clear that this is not really teaching that. They probably could. They, they, maybe there's other scriptures that would support that theory. But, but this is clearly not teaching that. This is really an account of what really happened. And um, one of the things that um, we should touch on, though, which I, I really didn't write it down here, or maybe I have it some other notes here but one of the things that that that, that we really need to touch on um, when pastor quarry asked that question it just came up to me it's like what can happen you know prayer can be difficult one of the one of the most difficult things for, for for Christians to do regularly actually is to pray because there's a barrier there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a barrier to prayer and um it is I'm gonna use this word that the Bible uses it's the flesh so the, the, the carnal nature is really in enmity against prayer. And, um, and, and I'm still trying to answer the question, you know, Pastor. So, but I'm, 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 gonna, I'm using that to explain the sleep. So, so the carnal nature is not really just about, say, lusting and all that. It really is about what the flesh desires. So... Sometimes the flesh does not desire prayer. So what does it do? It shuts down. That's why we use this word boring, or it cannot, or, or, it, or it, it cannot go very far. It doesn't have the endurance for certain things. So it shuts down. So I think this is really what happens to, to, to them. Like, for example, there are some people, no matter how tired they are, if somebody says, there's festivities going on over here. They're excited. They the flesh wants that, so they 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 can they can go. But if if if, if it's something else, they, you know they really can't get the energy to 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 persevere and go through there. So I think this is really um, what's going on, and it kind of it will affect us the same way uh, of us, and we we have to learn to push through that, and you know push through that, and I and I think Jesus. Um, and we'll see it in, um, we'll, we'll see, we actually see it in Matthew 26. It's the same thing that happened in Matthew 26. So um, in answer, Pastor, to be honest, I don't think that this is really teaching about what will happen to us when we, when we fall asleep. Um, I think what it's really teaching is um, about the event. And what it's showing is that the, the Lord Jesus persevered um, to a pre period of uh, to a long duration of prayer, and the 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 apostles, you know, they were not mature enough at this point to actually um, persevere through it. You know, this is really my my take on it. But 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 now, to be fair, I believe like when we fall asleep in the Lord, we're gonna because the Scripture teaches that in other places that we're going to be awakened. You know, when we awaken, it will be in a, in a glorious um, state as well. It teaches that in other places, but not really here. Not, not with this example. All right. Um, Pastor, before you go, uh, Pastor Lambert, I just want you to know, um, there's, it's almost quarter two. Oh. So it's, not, it's 944 right now, but uh, time is going. So I'm not sure if you had more stuff you wanted to present or yeah. did you want to continue with questions and comments so i just need five more minutes to say a few things okay so let's let's hold the questions and comments for now and we'll come back pastor yeah so what so thank you brother jeff yeah. um so um what i want to talk about is just i did I, we won't have time to explore this but um hinder what hinders priors um 
And what I mean by that, there are certain things that will cause our prayers not to be answered, where the Lord will ignore it. And, it's and it would have been because of us. So what, what are some of those things? Um, we, won't, we don't have time to read them, but I'll just cite them. Isaiah 58, 1 to 5. The people in Isaiah's time, they weren't living right. They weren't doing what was right. But yet still, they, they seek God on a regular basis and want to hear from God. And so the Lord, and, and there's other scriptures that talks about this, but I picked that one because I like to read that scripture during prayer and fasting because it helps to get us a perspective on, you know, what it is about. And, and, and so what happens when it comes to seeking the Lord? Our righteous doings must go before us. Our, our righteous doings must proceed, you know. So, so um, the, the, for example, the scripture said, um, and I don't want to um, put in a debate here, but the, the scripture said that the, the Lord ear is open to the righteous, right? But he does not hear sinners, right? So that's a true thing. You know, so the, the sinner that the Lord would hear is the one who's in the verge of who's who's is um, pursuing repentance, right? So, so, so what happens is that people, the children of God, they 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 need to be living right, so that when they, you know, and Jesus talks about if you keep my commandments, then the Lord will hear you, and and so on and so forth. And um, First Peter three, verse seven is another scripture that I put in here because it talks about a man treating his wife right. Because if he doesn't, Peter says, his prayer will be hindered. Mm -hmm. So it talks, and it's, it's man or woman. So in our family situations, we need to behave properly because if we do not, it will hinder our prayer. Right. So so we 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 will see that, you know, we will see that in there. And then in Matthew 5, 23 to 24, there's a scenario there. And I'm, I'm, for some reason, um, I can't remember that 100 percent. But it, it talks about a situation there as well that that that. Oh, yes. I remember what it is now. That scripture says if you have your gift and you come to offer it at the altar and you remember that somebody has something against you, put your gift down. Go make it right with the person and now and then come back and offer your gift. So that what happens is this you can't be in um what you call it now strife with somebody, be knowingly in strife with somebody and be seeking the Lord. We need to seek peace with that person before we can make peace with God. So now it uses the, the word as an offering, but we do not offer up animals and so on our offerings are our prayers and our praises right and so it translates that way so we, we we need to understand that if we don't live right if we don't behave correctly um it will definitely hinder our prayer um the other thing that i want to say you know um I wish we had more time to get into it we need to be able to push past the flesh barrier when we go to pray because a lot of people, believe it or not, the reason why we can't pray all night like Jesus and actually keep at it is because sometimes our flesh. And so what happens is it comes, I would say, for me, it came with me just seeking the Lord. And when I seek the Lord, the more I seek the Lord is the longer. And when the Lord starts to, when the Lord starts to anoint you, you, it's like you go into another room. It's like you go into another threshold where 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 the holy spirit starts to take over and then your your body doesn't really feel it that much because it's inside of you and and that's really what's propelling you and somehow there's a joy coming from that that lifts you above whether the tiredness or the whatever the mundane feeling that your your body's feeling at the time um and you know there's a lot to be said about that i really can't cover it here we don't really have enough time, but um, we need to really push past what I call the flesh barrier to go into more of the, the realm where we can reach out to the Lord. These kind of things will hinder, um, you, you know, us from reaching, you know, heights in prayer. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, and then I'm, I'm finished here, is times when prayer needs to be intense. We do talk about the repetition already. 
I mean, not repetition, the schedule, meaning that we need to be doing often uh, and so on on a daily basis. We talk about that. But, you know, there are times when, you know, prayer needs to be intense. Uh, we see it in, you know, in times of severe trouble, you know, you, you really need to, to, to do, to, to, to sort of like pray for a long period. For example, when Peter was in prison, the church prayed for him continually. Um, you know, they prayed, you know, very long, continuous prayer went out for him, right? So they, they were intense in their prayer. They kept it up until he was delivered. And what's really important that we see in the early church is that when on a corporate level, when prayer has been going on, you really need to have everybody in one accord, meaning that what one accord really means in that situation that you have the same agenda when you go when you go to pray. The second one that I have here is um, demonic uh, attacks. You know, so Jesus said the disciples couldn't cast out this demon out of this child. And, and Jesus, and they were questioning Jesus, why couldn't we cast out this one? We cast out the other ones, but what about this one? And he says, you know, Number one, your faith was weak. And number two, this kind doesn't come out unless you fast and pray, right? So sometimes there's certain things that we we're going to face, the demonic attacks and so on. We really need to fast and pray about these things. Now, and the last thing I, I really want, there's a question that I want to ask or, or explore with us. And it is, it was, how does our personal prayers, how our personal prayer life, how would it, um, fuel or complement um, corporate worship. And, and, and I'll just say my, my opinion on this, or my experience, is that when our prior life is, is strong, you'll find that our corporate worship, our coming together to worship, is, is that much more stronger, and maybe even I'm going to use the word more productive, because um, I believe that when the Lord is having his way with us personally, he has his way much more, his will is much more done among us corporately, right? Because, you know, when people are praying and the Lord is dealing with them, for example, you come to church and the Lord will lift up this brother to help this one. And the Lord will lift up this sister to help that one. Because the Lord, you know, we are in, we say, you know, we're in tune with the Lord as opposed to, just doing our own thing or in our own um our own zone so um to finish off um as i said before we talked about these power tools but it you know it, it's no one of them is standalone they all need to be done practice together and i believe that we will find that our life will be much more, um, I'm going to say, rewarding or progressive, or I use those words, according to our Christian calling. And also, even oh, it will flow into our personal life. Because Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and the temporal stuff will be added. That's what he says in the, in the scripture, in, in, in the book of, I believe it's right there in Matthew 6 as well, but somewhere between Matthew 5 to seven that's that's where you said that um so 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 thank you um if there's any questions i am you know i'm i'm, I'm done so if there's any question or comments and i thank and i want to thank everybody for you know all the participation and um all the discussions that we've been having over the past four weeks all right we appreciate you pastor lambert uh, and with that, we're going to go for some questions and comments. So if you have them, now would be the time to raise your hands. I see Pastor Marshall. You can go ahead, unmute your mic, and make your comment or ask a question further. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? We can hear you loud and clear. Yes, sir. I am so glad and uh, so blessed. And as Pastor Lambert declared, everything that he said there, I was blessed. I heard some points that really, as old as I am, I never looked through those things, but it opened to me. One of the things there that when God, so Jesus said that we should go into our closet, and when we go into our closet, it may be that some people feel that you go into whether the bathroom or your house or whatever. 
You can go in your closet anywhere. You could be in the train, in the plane. It means you close off all communication that coming from outside and close yourself in your, your mind. And so you speak to him for he's listening to hear the righteous. Secondly, the, that most of us today, when we go to pray, we did not push over the flesh. We're still in the flesh. And this is the reason why a lot of the people today, are ex excuse me if I hurt somebody, we don't receive the Holy Ghost because to receive the Holy Ghost, you have to push out and over the flesh. Sometimes you sweat like, like I don't sweat out something and you fell over and you are dear talking to God by yourself. So you have to push over the flesh to receive and we are not doing that. that. And James declared that we don't get because we did not ask. The other verse below said we did ask, but we ask and miss. So we have to look into those things and whatever we know that somebody about against you, you settle that also. And anything you you ask God for that is in is not permissive, but I mean is um is is um is his plan, his will, he will give it to us because it's in his will and he will not be told it from us. So thank you very, very, very much, Pastor Lambert, for these uh different experience and thought that you dig down into. Thank you, Pastor Marshall, for those yeah. lovely comments. Uh, Pastor, you go ahead and unmute, make a comment, or ask a question. Uh, <clears throat> yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, Pastor Lovebird, bless you, man. My question, Pastor, um, we're talking about prayer, and, 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 and I really, you know, support the scriptures and your comments and your teaching on prayer. I, I really don't have any objection so far. But the question I want to ask, because we, we, we operate as a people, all right, as a church. Um, and we see here where Jesus invites um, Peter and John, you know, to pray with, with him and they fall asleep. And some people thought that this was an all night prayer, which the Bible didn't say. It was the hour of prayer, all right? So the hour of prayer is a moment. So I, I want to ask a question. If, if, if you're invited into the hour of prayer, all right, and you know that physically you are not prepared, right? Is anything wrong for you to say you're not coming or you're not going? Or, or you pretend as if you are in it and you go there and fall asleep? <laughs> I've got, uh, so, Pastor, um, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to push a little bit on your question because I, I need your question to open a little more. So, so what I mean by that is um, the, 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 when you say they, they're invited to the hour of prayer, but they're not prepared so the hour of prayer when what do you mean by that because uh, i just want to clarify that part of it so that we can because that's the that's the, the that part needs a little clarification so that we can really fully answer answer, answer your question all right um i i, I noticed and and i think somebody touched the muslim but they, the muslim never say they go to church or they go to you know when they when they sit they say they go to prayer is service they go in mm -hmm. they talk about prayer they don't they don't deal it like well anyway i mean like you you know it's prayer meeting you're invited to prayer meeting or you know thursday night is prayer meeting or wednesday night is prayer meeting or whichever night is prayer meeting right and you know that service that you come to pray is prayer is prayer service but you come 
And when you come, you're just sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Is it that you should, you know, because God don't want a lame sacrifice. So if you know physically that your body is tired, right? Because it's God we serve in. And so we can't give God a show. We might give man a show. So we present ourselves there as if we don't want to be seen that we are absent, but our mm-hmm. sacrifice there is lame. So I'm saying, is it better for us to, you know, stay out, go rest, rather than pretend, go in and fall asleep? Okay, sir. Um, you know, sir, I have a, a, believe you me, that is a, that's a very good question. So, but, there, but I want to say, though, that there's really two parts of this question. So uh, a two, part, two motive in your question, right, that we need to address. So if the motive is because the person don't want to say no, because they will look bad, whether they're tired or not, they shouldn't go. <laughs> if you're only going, and, and you have some people, and I'm going to open it up too, you have some people that the they, they, they matter, you might be praying about a matter, and the matter is important, and they don't want it to look bad that they don't go, so they go, right? But they're not really on one accord because they're not, they're not into it. So they shouldn't really go, stay out. But on the other hand now, if it's only because you're tired, I'm going to explain something about this. Because I have gone, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I have a little bit more, I have some more experience in prayer over the years where the tiredness don't stop me because what 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 really happens for me is if I am tired and I go to the prayer meeting, mm-hmm. if I could just focus on the Lord enough, the anointing will revive me and I'll able to make it through. And I'm able even actually to pray and even feel re- refreshed. And then I can go and, and I will actually even drive home and all that and go sleep later. So so in that sense, if the person have enough experience to understand that, they 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 can go right, and and even some people might not have the enough experience, but their their heart is really willing, mm-hmm. but but um, maybe their flesh is weak. I, those people not gonna hinder the prayer. But if it's the person going, just because they don't want it to look bad, I don't care what the scenario is. But you should not be going to prayer meeting just because you don't want it to look bad. Because you're first right off the bat, you're not on one accord with everybody who's going. Thank right you. off the bat, you're not on one accord. So, you know, just, just be honest. Nobody can, to be honest, I prefer that the person just be honest and say, you know what, leave me out. You might not even have to explain yourself, but say, I don't think it's appropriate for me to be there. And, and if whoever is running the prayer meeting um, have any understanding, they should just let you be. Because the other part about it, and I, I believe you me, Pastor, it's a very important question. Because the other part about it, God does not need a hundred people to pray for a matter. The, the scripture even break it down to two or three, right? So he doesn't, doesn't really need a hundred people, but he needs dedicated people and people who are on one accord, right? That, yeah. that, that's really what he needs. Thank you. Thank All right. you. All praises. Um, okay. Brother Simmons and Pastor Walker, I'm going to give you guys each a minute. And then we're going to have to close. Okay. All praises. Okay. Good night again. I think the pastor answered a lot of the question. I want to say that if you, um, Peter never, never, it's not that he never want to go. It's that, that he never strong enough to, to be it. All right. And prayer is the thing that strengthens you. Because remember, I said with prayer and fasting, with more prayer and fasting, that that so you will by going, even though you sleep, if you want to be there, even though you sleep, it will still help you to go. Because it, it, it is with, with prayer and fasting you get your strength. So if you but as the pastor said, if you don't want to be there, you don't go. That's all I want to say. All right, we appreciate your comments. Uh go ahead, Pastor Walker. Yeah, very good question by Pastor Quarry. And um, I have been to prayer meeting, all night prayer meeting, and um, I am tired, extremely tired, but I still go. As I go with intention that at some point, that tiredness will go. 
And sometimes I will sleep in my car, take a little nap in my car and then join the prayer meeting. Or I would do that even during the prayer meeting at the beginning, take a little nap at some point and then continue. And a lot of time when I go, they're tired by the, the prayer meeting to get in full gear. I am, I am alive and, and well, so I would not discourage somebody from going if you're feeling tired, as long as you are going with the right attitude. And I think that's what the pastor Quar is asking about, going with the right attitude. So it doesn't matter if you're tired or not, you can receive revival. If you are, you are going there for the right purpose, you can be revived. I have been someone extremely tired and I stay for the entire thing because this, this, the spirit of God kept me and um, bring some life in my body. And I, was, I didn't fall asleep in that all. Bless him. My friends, we give thanks. Uh, Pastor Lama, you got your hands up? Uh, yes, sir. So, so here's the other thing um, that I, I should say. Even from our example, we read about Jesus. The, the disciples fell asleep. And you notice the Lord never rebuked them. And even when they wake up, the God the Father spoke to them. You know, I believe I believe they heard a voice. The um, what it says, uh, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, "This is my beloved Son. Hear him." So the reason why I, I I'm making a comment now is that the, the the main thing is the people who come, their heart must be in it, even if they're tired and take a little nap, because what will happen is. You'll find some that will pray and they will pray through, especially if you're, we're praying about a matter. They will pray and they will pray through, right? And then sometimes those who catch a little nap, they'll wake up and they'll do some praying as well, right? So, so, so the Lord, the, 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 because of the limitation of the flesh, the, the, I don't think the Lord mind, but I think where the Lord mind is when people come now and their heart is not in it, they really don't want to be there. That's a, that's a, that's a different category but some of us is going to be not able strong enough to to push through and some of us will learn later to push through that tiredness if we're tired you know amen oh, um pastor do you have any closing comments you'd like to make um are you... me yeah pastor lambert you got any closing oh, thank comments you. Yes, sir. Just um, just to say that um, I, I want to give thanks to Pastor Quarry and the church in Ottawa to give me the opportunity to come and um, and, and share the word with you and um, thank all those who you know came on and, and share. And I think I get to know some people on here, even though I don't meet you in face face to face, but I know the voice of some of the pastors and so on. Um, and I, I will come back as a guest, you know. Um, <laughs> but I probably won't be able to join at the beginning, very beginning, because we, we do have a, a service, a prayer service on Wednesdays as well. So, um, but maybe at least I'll catch the half, the other half of this. But um, I, I really appreciate it. I really enjoy it. And I, I want to congratulate um, the church in Ottawa, Pastor Quarry and the church in Ottawa for this forum. And I, 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 I came on here, I see what it's about. And I think it's wonderful. And I pray that the Lord will give you guys strength to keep it up. God bless you. All right. All praises. All praises. We give thanks to the Most High. Uh, first, give the Lord a hand. Let's just give thanks and praise. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Most High. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, way to finish this month um, being fully edified uh, through the word. Uh, went through a lot of scriptures. Um, you know, prayers um, is vital. It's important. It's the, you know, it's the heartbeat of the person to communicate with the most high. Um, you know, uh, I want a scripture really quick I want to bring out is Psalm 66, verse 18. I want to uh, it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know, so it's, it's really important to get that sin out, get that lawlessness out, walk upright. That's who the most, Pastor Lambert, we quoted that scripture. Those, those who up, walk upright, they're the ones that, their, their prayers are going to be heard. But if we're holding iniquity in our hearts, if we're doing, if we're not living right, we walk in a, an abomination, living a wicked life, you know, not hearing the word of the Lord, not obeying him, then, you know, we can't expect our prayers to be answered. So uh, I really appreciate this lesson, Pastor Lambert. 
I know all of us on this platform really appreciate this lesson because we are all striving to get to that level. We're all striving to try to move up in that prayer because it's always good for me, especially I love Bible study. I love listening, but you know, that communication, that lifting up another level, you know, decreasing the flesh and increasing in the spirit. That's something we all need to, to increase on. We all need to do better. So we give thanks, Pastor Lambert, for your time. We thank God for you and the teachings that you've given us throughout this month. Truly has been a blessing. Uh, and at this time, we're going to be asking, you know, Pastor, I asked you this earlier, but can you close us off in a quick word of prayer as well, Pastor Corey, if that's all right? And then Pastor Marshall, if you're available, I'm going to ask you to do the benediction. All praises be to the Most High. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, great God, for your blessing. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, great God, for the five weeks which Pastor Lambert has been with us on this platform, God teaching us how important it is, mighty God, to be successful in our Christian life, O oh Lord, both in this life, O oh Lord, and in the life to come. Father, we thank you, Father, for the gone week. We thank you even for tonight. Father, we just pray your blessing on him, Father, that you continue to keep him in all his ways. And I pray, God, that he will say as Paul, God, that he will take heed, lest he preach in others and himself be a castaway. I pray, Father, that you will come Cover him in the name of Jesus. Bless his family. Bless his ministry. Bless the, the brethren, O oh Lord, that he shepherd. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all, mighty God, the minister that are with us. Father, we thank you for the support. We thank you, Father, mighty God, for all the saints that join with us from all over the globe, Father, and all different parts of the world. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you even for Brother Jeffrey, who have led us into, into worship for this month. Oh, Lord, I pray your blessing on him, mighty God, and his family as well. He's a man who desire to serve you, zealous for your word, mighty God. I just pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to grant him the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding he need, God, as he continue, mighty God, to do service for you. Thank you, Father, for all the different departments within the church of God, Sabbath keeping here in our tower. Thank you for the team, O oh Lord, who work behind the scene, mighty God, to bring this Bible study to its success, O oh Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that we all continue to labor, Father. And even if we don't get any thank you from anyone on earth, Father, help us to recognize, Lord, that you, mighty God, is watching and nothing we do in your name will go unseen by you, Father, because you are a God that's going to reward us openly. And so, Father, we pray for your blessing. We pray tonight, God, if there's any on this platform who have not yet accept you as your Lord and Savior, I I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to them right now. And if there's any God who on this platform tonight who is sick or any member of their family who is not well, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that by your stripe that they will be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, that you will save every and save universally. I pray, God, that you will bring home every backsider universally. And I pray, God, that you'll strengthen every believer universally. Let your will be done here and heard as it is in heaven as we ask his mercies and tell you thanks to Jesus Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 All praises be to the most high. Thank you, Pastor Corey, for uh, closing us off in prayer. We appreciate you. Um, Pastor Marshall, if you can give us the benediction, we give thanks for you as well, pa uh, Pastor Marshall. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Father, majestic and poor, both now and forevermore, till Jesus come, lest the saints of the living God shall praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise God. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise